Welcome to the Sanjay Lechman Show. He's a 2018 graduate of Caddo Parish Magnet High School. Very proud of that. He is also the 2018 Louisiana High School Student of the Year. He is also a two-time ICEF finalist. So we're going to interview him about what he is interested in and what's motivated him and how he experienced ICEF and everything about that. So what motivates you in science, Sanjay? So hi guys, I'm Sanjay Lechman, as Ms. Clements has introduced, and we're going to be talking a little bit about Science Fair. I'm going to try to pump you all up for Science Fair and why you should care about Science Fair. So first, you know, what motivates me in science? Well, when I first got in, my, in a lab, in the first lab that I worked in, you know, I went into the lab and I thought, well, okay, I have a basic understanding of biology and chemistry, but what I learned was the more you start to learn, the more you realize you don't know. And that's what really motivates me in science. And as I went through the entire lab experience, at the end, I had gained more knowledge, but I also realized how much out there in science I just had no idea. But I still had created this compound to treat triple negative breast cancer. And I was sitting there looking at this test tube, and I had created 0.3 milligrams of this compound, of this Fusar chromonome analog. And I was looking at it and saying, well, this compound has never really been created before and I've created 0.3 milligrams of it and it's gonna be treated on cancer cells to see how well it works. And as soon as you get that type of gratification and that kind of makes you appreciate science and science research as a whole. Okay, my dear. What are the best ways to find a STEM project? So the first thing you wanna do is figure out what you're passionate about. Um, I started my first real science fair project was in eighth grade. Uh, when I did a project with my best friend Robert Brown and we did a project on peanut allergy. So Robert Brown's sister Catherine has peanut allergy and we wanted to know what the prevalence of peanut allergy was in our community because we knew that if you have um, an allergic reaction in school, usually the teacher in the classroom does not have an EpiPen on her. Um, so if you don't have an EpiPen as a student, um, you could be in some serious trouble. Um, so we found out what the prevalence of peanut allergy was in our Caddo Parish community. But then when I got to high school, my parents said that we don't want to help you with science fair anymore. You're on your own. So I said, well, what am I passionate about? And I'm super passionate about business. Even I'm going into the business honors program at Texas A&M. And about business, I love the stock market. So I said, well, how do I turn the stock market into a science fair project? Well, I knew one big question about the stock market is, you know, should we invest in individual stocks, like a simple stock like Apple or Microsoft or Google, or do we invest in a mutual fund that may have 100 individual stocks? So I want to compare individual stocks versus mutual funds. So my ninth grade project was something that I was super passionate about, about the stock market. And when I got to 10th grade, I wanted to do a continuation of that project. I hadn't finished with the stock market. So I found out that at the 30 individual stocks that I looked at, 17 of them did better than the mutual fund. So I want to look at individual stocks in particular. So it's all around this passion for the stock market and you can turn so much into science. Science is not, science fair is not always about, you know, a hypothesis and, and the scientific method. That's a big portion of science. But if you're into engineering, you can create something new that's going to help so many people that may not follow that structured path that you're used to. So first, find something that you're passionate about. Even a project like the stock market can still go to the state science fair and place twice. Um, so always find something you're passionate about. And don't be scared to go up to a teacher and ask them where you can get a STEM project. After those two years of doing a, a project with the stock market, I wanted to start biological science research. So I went to my teacher, Ms. Clements, at the time, and I just asked her, I said, how can I get into a laboratory? And she connected me with a professor at LSUS, Dr. Madavian, and I met with her and I started working in the lab that summer. So don't be afraid to go up to your teachers, your science teachers, and ask them for help because they have tons of resources and they're always willing to help you. Well, thank you. Alrighty, what kind of project got you a bid to ICEF, the International Science and Engineering Fair? Sure, so in ninth and 10th grade, I got a good understanding of science fair uh, from my stock market projects, but then I want to move on to a biological science project, and this was an organic chemistry project that was kind of given. So I got into the lab, Dr. Madavian's lab at LSUS um, over the summer after 10th grade, 
and it was a project to create a new compound. It was a analog. It was taking an existing compound and was changing the structure of it um, to see how changing the structure affected um, its efficacy in treating triple negative breast cancer. And that project eventually led to a bid to ICEF in Los Angeles, California. Um, but it does take a lot of knowledge to get there, right? So I hadn't taken um, organic chemistry at the time. Um, I only had a basic understanding of chemistry. So I had to go to the library. I booked a study room for several hours, you know, many different days. And I got every single organic chemistry textbook that was in the library. I flipped them all open. I started reading. And that's, that's the way to go. So you, first of all, you have to be passionate. And a lot of people will go into a lab and they won't really enjoy the topic, but I'm telling you, every single project that comes out of a laboratory or a lab that publishes papers and journals, every single project is incredibly interesting. And if you start to get to know it and you go in with a, a positive mindset, you will start to love it. So with that project, I'd created an analog of an existing compound to treat triple negative breast cancer to see how it compared to the compound that had already existed. And this is the great thing about science fair. The compound that I had created at the end did not work as well as the compound that already existed. It actually worked very poorly compared to the compound that already existed. And some people may see that as a failure, but what it really is is we just found one way that didn't work. So instead of focusing our attention on changing the structure of the compound, we should stick to studying the compound that already works more. Um, so in that project that didn't work at the beginning, it still was able to get me not only a bid to the International Science Fair, but I also placed third place in biochemistry and received $1,000 for that project. So don't be afraid to uh, present a negative result because a negative result is still contributing to the science world. Okay. What advice do you have for actually presenting your project? The big thing is to practice. Uh, with that first project that I did, I practiced with as many people as I possibly could. I don't even care if you don't like chemistry because I want to be able to present it to someone who doesn't have a huge interest in chemistry but is still able to understand it. So one big thing with presenting science fair projects is to not use all these big jumbo terms you want to put it in layman's terms so everybody can understand it. So my last project that I did, it was on open heart surgery, and it was trying to improve um, how, like the effectiveness of grafts when they graft a vein into the heart um, to bypass a blocked artery. Well, if I used all these different complicated terms while I was presenting it, you know, not everyone who's going to be listening to my presentation understands all those little complicated cardiology terms. So I put them into layman's terms. I would say, look, you've got a heart and you've got these pipes in the heart. Those pipes are the coronary arteries. Those pipes are feeding into the heart. Well, those pipes get blocked. Well, what do you do when you have a blocked pipe? You need to take a new piece of pipe and graft or you know, reroute the blood flow. So with putting it, instead of talking about veins and arteries and all these vessels, I just made it something more mechanical, something that everyone can understand, a pipe. And using terms like that, using those layman terms, really gets others to understand it and they get them to get interested in it. One big thing is telling your science fair project like a story. If you start with talking about all these different big science terms and you don't play it like a good story, no one cares. But if you say first, you know, the surgery begins. After the surgery begins, they take the vein out and you demonstrate everything. I use my hands a lot and you use pictures. You take the vein out, the vein is placed on a table, and when that vein is sitting on that table, it sits there for two and a half hours, and during that time, those cells in that vein are stressed. You don't need to go into all the details about how it's stressed. You don't need to, unless they ask, you don't need to talk about oxidative stress and reactive oxygen species and all those big terms. You just need to say those cells are stressed. And what do cells do when they're stressed? Well, they express all these little molecules, all these signals to say that something is wrong. I'm not talking about adhesion molecules that are being expressed. All I say is that the cells know that something is wrong. And when the cells know that something is wrong, other things have to come in and they have to correct the problem. If you make it like a big, nice, easy story to understand, everyone will love your project. And that was the number one reason why I was able to get to ISAF twice. Because with all the projects that I ever create, 
or ever present, I always present it like a story. Tell the person who's listening to your project why this project matters, and that's how you'll get to ISAF. Okay, so speaking of ISAF, tell us a little bit about your experiences. So the ISAF experience is like no other before, and I'm going to tell you some things that are going to make you want to go to ISAF so badly. So the first year that I went to ISAF in 2017, we went to Los Angeles, California. And of course, Los Angeles is incredible, especially in May. It's a beautiful city. They put us in an incredible hotel. So Science Fair doesn't play jokes with hotels. They put you in a nice hotel with a beautiful view. So we're at the hotel. Everything's perfect. And we are there for about a week. Well, not only are there all these huge ceremonies, a huge opening ceremony, you get to listen to tons of speakers, entrepreneurs, you get to meet Nobel laureates. I mean, we were there and we got to shake hands with a guy who worked and really you know, showed what apoptosis looks like. If you probably learned about apoptosis and biology, well, this guy, Robert Horvitz, got a Nobel Prize for discovering really the mechanism by how apoptosis works in these little nematode worms. You got to meet people like that, and it was incredible. But not only that, they want to make sure that you have fun too. They know these guys aren't all just these little science geeks and nerds. So they let you have fun in Los Angeles. Not only do they have an incredible dance, which people in science can dance, but they also sent us to Universal Studios. And now Universal Studios is usually very busy. The maximum capacity at the Los Angeles Universal Studios is around 50,000 people. But what they did for us is they said, we're gonna close Universal Studios and open it to just the 1,767 finalists that are here today. So every single ride at Universal Studios was open and every single restaurant at Universal Studios was open for all of us to enjoy unlimited food for free. Everything was paid for and you could go on the rides as many times as you wanted completely for free. So some of my most favorite favorite rides that I only went to Universal Studios about eight years ago, I got to go on those rides over and over and over again as many times as I wanted, all because I did a science fair project. So that, that hopefully should motivate you to go do science fair. You get to travel all around the world. I've gotten to go to Los Angeles. I've gotten to go to Pittsburgh this last year. I've gone to Washington DC with another science competition. And the opportunities are endless. And Science Fair will bring you there and it will make you love science so much. So I hope you're motivated to do science because I'm telling you it will be the best decision of your life. All right, Sanjay. Thank you so much, my dear. And thank you. And good luck to you. Thank you.